I mean, your previous two features, uh, World War Z and Star Trek Into Darkness, were based around established ideas that already had kind of a fan base, or so to speak. This is a completely original idea. I'm just wondering if that makes for a quite freeing experience when writing the screenplay. It, it, it is immensely freeing. I think it's, it's also a little difficult because, particularly for someone uh, like me who is used to television, um, I, I like to build very, very dense stories, and Brad um, had to keep sort of rem reminding me through the process, like, we got to do this in two hours. So I, I think that um, a lot of the time was built uh, sort of constructing this gigantic iceberg, but what the part above the water is the only part that you're actually going to see when you walk into the movie. So um, it's uh, for an original film, you want to pack so many ideas into it, but then you have to tell an entertaining story in the process. Of course, in regards to collaborating with Brad, I mean, he's a wonderful filmmaker, and you've worked with some incredible, you've collaborated and written screenplays with the likes of Ridley Scott as well. Sure. I mean, you must be so inspired by these, these people's sort of creativity as well. It must make for such a kind of inspiring sort of collaborative experience, I guess. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I, I do, um, I, I do uh, pinch myself constantly because I, I, I look at these amazing filmmakers as my peers because now uh, I've gotten to partner with them, but at the same time, you know, I grew up on Alien, and I remember seeing uh, an episode of Amazing Stories, which uh, Brad Bird did an animated episode of Amazing Stories called Family Dog, and that was the first time that I saw his name and, and sort of followed his writing through The Simpsons, and then when I saw Iron Giant. And so the idea that I go from a fan basically, you know, loving uh, the Incredibles or Ratatouille to suddenly now I'm getting to work with this guy. Uh, it is, um, uh, I know people say this phrase all the time, but in my case it's entirely genuine. It's a dream come true. So I kind of look at my career um, really as the, the biggest benefit is the opportunity to work with the people who inspired me to do this. And in regards to, I mean, you've written sort of darker movies aimed at sort of an older audience, but is there more fun to be had in a way to write a film for all of the family, but can it equally be more challenging to sort of get that balance right and appeal to parents and children sort of alike? Yeah, I think that um, that uh, I, I'm always a firm believer in that, that kids are a lot more sophisticated than we give them credit for. Um, I saw a lot of movies when I, I saw Star Wars for the first time when I was four years old. And so I, I think this idea of uh, not talking down to kids um, uh, that creates a space for um, for their parents to enjoy movies as well, and I particularly the, the Pixar films are, um, are are very sophisticated in their storytelling, but they're very um, entertaining in the process. But ultimately, I think that you know f trying to find some common ground where um, mom and dad and and the kids can all sort of uh, meet and talk about together was was really the ambition behind this. I mean, the film is really kind of environmentally conscious too. I mean, do you feel an, almost a, a responsibility uh, as a kind of a filmmaker to to preach this kind of message to the next generation as well? Do, do you think cinema could work as a real means of of, of uh, educating people? You know, not not to get too fancy about it, but I do think that um, there 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 is a burden on filmmakers, even if you're just making a summer movie, to try to say something about the world that we live in. And I I think that when you have a word like Tomorrowland, um, that I when I hear that word, it's just, it, it creates a feeling inside of me that is inspiring. Um, the idea to uh, kind of try to put that on the screen. Like how do you generate that feeling? Um, and you can't generate optimism without acknowledging pessimism. You have to say that there's this other part that exists in all of us that says like, sure, I would love there to be a wonderful future, but man, you gotta, you know, you got to look around the world that we live in, and that it is really hard for me to believe that we're going to be able to sort all this stuff out. And the movie is really about um, uh, the journey through pessimism uh, towards optimism. And in regards to kind of capturing that sort of enchanting tone that you, you did manage to do so well, how much was the actual uh, area of Disneyland, uh, the Tomorrowland area, sort of inspired that that atmosphere and that tone? And, and can you see, because obviously we're parts of the Caribbean as well, can you see this being more of a um, a regular thing to kind of base films around attractions at theme parks. Yeah, I, you know, I, when I first heard they were making a movie out of Pirates of the Caribbean, I kind of kind of rolled my eyes and I was like, oh my god, they're making a movie out of a ride. But 
when my eight-year-old son first went on Pirates of the Caribbean, he thought the ride was based on the movie. So this whole idea of, it's really just storytelling in a way, and I think that that's what Walt Disney, that's why Disneyland has really um, uh, survived and thrived over these years is, it, it really captures our imagination still. And so storytelling is storytelling, whether it's on the screen or, or in a theme park ride, but the idea of kind of creating a movie that had a ride-like feeling to it, where it was a real adventure, a real quest, um, it was, is something that we were going for. And, um, and I think that in Tomorrowland, um, Tomorrowland is about the future, but we've envisioned the future in many different ways. Um, Jules Verne en en envisioned the future at the end of the 19th century. Now, um, and Walt envisioned the future in the 1960s. Now our vision in the year 2015 of the future, um, trying to find the common ground behind all those ideas. What, what, is it that, um, what is it that catalyzes that belief in us or that faith in us or that dream in us? Um, these are these are the 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 the, the sort of deeper kind of um, uh, philosophical constructs behind this, you know, hopefully entertaining summer movie. And uh, in regards to writing for someone like George Clooney, who's got <clears throat> such a, a distinctive kind of persona, does that make the the challenge harder, or does it make it almost easier to sort of write for someone that you know so well? Well, I think that we had always envisioned this character as being Clooney esque or Clooney like, and uh, and Brad. Uh, you know, sort of looked at me one day and said, uh, maybe we should just ask George. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it'll be so much easier to get George to play a Clooney-esque character than somebody else to do it. And because I think that this character really, you know, was George in a lot of ways. I think that um, George is a guy who has a real strong sense of of using his celebrity to kind of make the world a better place. He doesn't accept the status quo. If he sees an injustice in the world, he says, he doesn't just shake his head and go, that's terrible. He says, what can we do about this? Let's roll up our sleeves. And I think that to take a character who had kind of really been hopeful and kind of given up and needed to be reactivated um, in a lot of ways, that's, that's the way a lot of us feel as we become adults. We want to reconnect with our, our childhood sense of wonder. Um, and uh, this movie is really about the journey of, of how do you light that spark again in someone who is, has become cynical based on the world around them because yeah. it's, it's pretty easy to, to, to go dark. And Prometheus 2 next for you. Thank you. Huh. Uh, and, uh, Ridley uh, is, is cooking it up and I can't wait to see what he's got. Brilliant. Well, thanks so much. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Hey You Guys. Is that yeah. from the Goonies? It is indeed. Yeah. Nice. Hey!